Hi, this is Michael. Before we begin today's program, I want to take a minute to remember a friend that we at Heart to Heart recently lost. David Franco was an adult with CHD and served at Hearts Unite the Globe in many capacities. He was co-host of Heart to Heart with Nicole and David. He was an editor and director on Heart to Heart with Anna. And above all, David Franco was a good friend. He was the kind of friend who took on any job, any task that was needed. His only concern was to do whatever he was asked to do as well as could be done. David was a part of the project that upgraded the sound and the editing of Heart to Heart in all of its forms. He was there when we needed him, and he, well... Well, he was just always there. David was a friend and partner, and we at Heart to Heart will miss him dearly. When he finally succumbed to his heart condition, he faced the end bravely and with a sense of accomplishment. His choices were few and brave, and he left this world with all the dignity he shared while in this world. David will be missed by all who knew him. In Hebrew we say, Yehi zichro baruch, may his memory be a blessing for his family and for all who knew him. Welcome to Heart to Heart with Michael, a program for the bereaved community. Our purpose is to empower our community with information and support. Today's program features our first ever panel of guests, and it promises to be a very special program indeed. With us in studio, two comedians, Philip Proctor, on his third visit with us, and Jamie Alcroft. Philip Proctor is a founding member of the thrice Grammy-nominated Fire Sign Theater, recognized as one of the 30 greatest acts of all time. His archives were recently purchased by the Library of Congress. He's appeared on and off Broadway in the USSR with the Yale Russian Chorus, in numerous local and regional theaters on radio, and in scores of films, video games, and TV shows. He recently appeared with his darling wife, Melinda Peterson, in a live audio play at the Worldcon Sci-Fi Convention in Dublin. And they are longtime members of Antius Theater Company. Antius, come and see us. He's won the Theater World, LA Weekly, LA Free Press, and Drama Critics Awards. And his voice credits include Toy Story, Spirited Away, Monsters, Inc., Inside Out, Seahorse Bob and Finding Nemo, The Drunken French Monkey in Dr. Doodlittle, Dr. Vidic in Assassin's Creed, and Howard DeVille in the three-time Emmy-winning Red Rats, which has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. His best-selling memoir, Where's My Fortune Cookie, is now available as a podcast and audiobook. And his latest book, What to Say to Your Crazy Right-Wing Uncle, Talking Points for Liberals, has just been released as well. He is presently developing a new podcast series with a longtime friend and producer, Ted Bonnet, called Phil and Ted's Sexy Boomer Show, aimed at that special and unrepresented demographic, and will be starring as the socialist firebrand Eugene V. Debs in a national radio project dramatizing his life. When does he sleep? Yeah, right. <laughs> he doesn't. He's the hardest working man in show business. Yeah, me... Behind the wheel. <clears throat> sleep oh, wait, I'm doing the bios, man. Uh, Jamie has been entertaining audiences as one half of the comedy duo Mac and Jamie for over 35 years. His appearances with Mac on The Tonight Show, both with Johnny Carson and Jay Leno, led to 125 original episodes of the syndicated half-hour comedy break with Mac and Jamie. Jay Leno said, Mac and Jamie are the top. They are the funniest duo working today. Jamie is in the elite core of L.A. voice actors, providing voices for many national commercials, plus The Simpsons, Rugrats, Power Beach, Justice League, Adam Sandler's Eight Crazy Nights, and scores of video games, most recently Gears of War 1 and 2 and 3 and 5, Transformers Halo, and numerous film looping for celebrities such as Sean Connery, Harrison Ford, and even John Lennon. Jamie was named Westlake Village Citizen of the Year for his successful fundraising for area schools. He has been named one of the top 25 most influential people in Ventura County. After a 12-year battle with congestive heart failure, he received a new heart and liver on September 24, 2017 at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. Together, they start on a YouTube series of their own making, Boomers on a Bench. And it is as boomers, we are all here tonight in a sparkling episode we call Boomers on the Launching Pad. So the panel, clocking in at only 60 years old and no worse for the wear is myself, the youngest boomer. At 72 years old and slightly refurbished, Jamie Alcroft is here with his previously enjoyed heart and liver in used but spankingly good condition. Jamie, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here, Michael. Our nice elder to statesman been joined, actually. Yes. Our elder statesman boomer at just 79 years old is Philip Proctor, who brought along his personal cardiac pacemaker. So please, no flash photography. Philip, welcome back to the program. I think he's you just up. back. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. It went off and I just had to deal with it. <clears> Are you there? Hello. <laughs> Uh, well, I am. Oh, I'm here. Oh, boy. This is I, I was with them one night. Grief. 
I was with him one night. Remind everybody. Wait a minute. We're telling a story. I was with him one night in a restaurant when his pacemaker went off. Yes. Three times. Oh, yes. my gosh. Shooting across the floor. Yes. It was wonderful. It was, it was just a show. To not, never never to be forgotten. Yeah, I had, had, a, a had a pacemaker put in because I had a, a logarithmia, <clears> which <throat> is, you know, fear of logs. Abe Lincoln suffered yeah. from it terribly. Yes. And that's why he moved out of the cabin into a big, Eventually. the White House. Eventually. But. <clears throat> you know that that Abraham Lincoln was born in his father's log cabin, and John Kennedy once spilled log cabin syrup in his father's Lincoln. Uh, isn't, yes. that isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? The coincidences between Kennedy and Lincoln. Yeah, yeah, I, not I, I refuse. Confused. There was no coincidence. That that is a that's a that, that's a conspiracy theory. Well, Lee Harvey Oswald's wife was named Marina. John Wilkes Booth's wife went to school with the girl whose parents owned a boat that they kept in the in Marina. 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 Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Yes, this is amazing. Wow. I've never heard before. Well, true story. The wow. things you learn on this program are unbelievable. Mm. I mean, yeah, exactly. Beyond that's the word for it. Beyond They're belief. absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> Good grief. The mind. He, I could he, just put the show and drive into the room. Go get some coffee. Mute we my mic and we'll be back. Whatever you like. I got my coffee. <laughs> okay. And this, uh, coffee, guys, this is a Harry Anderson mug. Is, Harry Anderson gave me this when I appeared on his show called Dave's World. And on the back it says, uh, I got this mug. I got my mug on Dave's World. See, <laughs> that's Harry for you. Got my mug on. Got my mug on. Dave's now you got your mug on heart to heart Bless with Michael, heart. and we're proud he, of it. He he left us far too soon. Uh, he did. Yeah, yeah. The well, flu you know took what? him out. That was that was for later on. But I'm, I'll I'll start with that one. Okay, that that question was it was near the end, but. I, I found you guys. Well, then we're near the end. We're near the end. Yeah, looks like it. Good night. Yes, see you nice. Nice. Good night. <laughs> I follow you guys a lot on Facebook, and uh, Phil, it's no secret that every time Hollywood loses another luminary, it's yeah, it's generally soccer. somebody you knew or, yes. or a mm -hmm. parent of somebody you knew or killed. Yeah, but yeah, we don't. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, okay. But, well, it's a little secret between us. Well, my question is that. Uh, well, you're right. Nobody watches anyway. But my my question is this. Um, it, I think it just seems because the, the Hollywood world, the entertainment world is so much more open and, and so much more visible to everybody. But I think it happens to everybody. We reach a point where our contemporaries start leaving. Yeah. What, what, what are you feeling? Are the walls closing in or do you feel something different? You know? No, I know the competition's disappearing. Yeah, that's yeah. right. The more, oh, for, okay. yeah, the more work for us. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it really, you know, uh, the fact that I've had the, the blessed opportunity of working with so many talented, wonderful people, or meeting them. Like mm -hmm. I met Kirk Douglas. He was recruiting us for the Boy Scouts of America, oh, who, by the way, are in the news today. Chapter 11. Yeah, they yeah. filed Chapter yeah. 11 because apparently yeah, they that. weren't prepared, according <laughs> yeah. to Steve Bluestein. Uh, but anyway, I, yeah, I met all these wonderful people, and I worked with many of them, Bob Cummings and all these, and, sh and they're going to die because I worked with them when I was in my 20s, and they right. were already in their 40s or 50s. You know, so, I mean, it's It was inevitable. It's inevitable, but 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 it also what affects me more in a, in a funny way, because the people that I lose, like Harry Anderson, who was a dear dear friend right up to the end, saw him about two months before the flu took him out. Uh, these people still live with me, mm -hmm. you know, and and they bring me great joy when I even think of of them, and I'm, and I'm so grateful for having spent time with them and gotten to know them, not just as actors and actresses, but yeah, as as real people, you know. And uh, and yet I also lost a dear friend named Steve Kaplan, who I mm -hmm. went to Riverdale mm -hmm. Country School with to uh, the ravages of Parkinson's after seven years mm -hmm. of suffering from it. And that happened at the same time that these five or six luminaries passed away. And mm -hmm. that affected me just as much because all the memories of the great times I had with Steve, we were mm -hmm. on the, we were editors of the school newspaper at Riverdale Country School in the Bronx. And he was a wonderful, funny, dear guy. And, and I saw him at some reunions and things that, you know, he's living with me too. And, and the fact that our class, which has a, a, a website, it was able to celebrate his life together mm -hmm. is another wonder of the modern age, you know? Right, so right, sure. that kind of like an online memorial for Steve uh, telling stories about mm -hmm. our experiences with him and our love of him, you know? So it's a little bit different. It's, I, I, we don't feel hemmed in. I really feel more no, like, like we're part of the infinite 
Right. The expanse. expansion of life, the expansion which includes of death. You yeah. know, I mean, that's yeah. the circle. My, my favorite sign language, I don't know if I can show you, is Indian sign language for birth and death. And let's see, it goes bir uh, birth and death, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. oh, it rises at the end. Death. It's a cycle. It's a circle. It's, it's the circle of life. It's what it is. It's a circle of death. And it will come to us all. Uh, yeah. And I hope, you know, however it comes. But being born, I don't remember it being particularly traumatic. So I don't think that leaving is going to be any more traumatic. And maybe we'll even be reborn. We don't know. Who knows? But that I know that I don't, I don't remember anything before I was born. Well, you don't Which remember anything me. from like yesterday. I don't, yeah, I don't well, remember what I had for breakfast. <laughs> Did we have breakfast? <laughs> Not yet. No, I, don't, okay. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I, I've had dinner. We got 10 hours oh, between us. See, now what were we talking about? Yeah, see, that so, you yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, you don't yeah, remember. You know, I don't remember. Life. The point is, I don't remember anything before yeah, or, uh, I was born. Right. So I don't plan on re knowing or being conscious of anything when I die. Uh, birth is the beginning of life. Death is the end of life. And we really don't know anything for sure but, on either end of it. But here we well, are. Phil. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. When you were uh, previous on this program, you, uh, you surprised me. You said that you were ready for what comes after. Uh, and in some sense, maybe looking forward to it. And I, and I got all upset. But um, <clears throat> what, what do you think comes? Do you have a concept of heaven or an afterlife? Or... Well, I, I was saying to Jamie yeah. that because we're in the entertainment industry, uh, it, there is there is a thing we call the AFTRA life, <laughs> the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. And the fact is that that once you're in the public eye uh, and, and, and people know who you are and love what you do and, you know, are part of your expanded universe, you can never really leave the planet no. you know uh, in, in a sure way and and the fact is there are movies and television shows and recordings and records and and, and books and everything that we leave behind and they'll live forever and they'll live forever as yeah. as we hope we will in the hearts of those who love us home tonight forever by the baby blue sound collective I think what I love so much about this CD is that some of the songs were inspired by the patients. Many listeners will understand many of the different songs and what they've been inspired by. Our new album will be available on iTunes, Amazon.com, Spotify. I love the fact that the proceeds from this CD are actually going to help those with congenital heart defects. Enjoy the music. Home Tonight Forever. Hi, my name is Jamie Alcroft, and I just published my new book, The Tin Man Diaries. It's an amazing story of my sudden change of heart as I went through a heart and liver transplant. I can think of no better way to read The Tin Man Diaries than to cuddle up in your favorite Hearts Unite the Globe sweatshirt and your favorite hot beverage, of course, in your Hearts Unite the Globe mug, both of which are available at the Hug Podcast Network online store, or visit heartsunitetheglobe.org. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The opinions expressed in the podcast are not those of Hearts Unite the Globe, but of the hosts and guests, and are intended to spark discussion about issues pertaining to congenital heart disease or bereavement. You are listening to Heart to Heart with Michael. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on Michael's program, please email him at Michael at hearttoheartwithmichael.com. Now, back to our program. You mentioned books that will live forever, so I'm just going to do this. That's, uh, that's I've got my book. books here, and we'll talk about them in a little while. Okay. And so, and did, you show, did you show Jamie's? Yeah, Jamie's yeah. is here. I've got, well, He's I've got, got the Tin Man Diaries time. right here. Jamie You're telling his amazing story. Made, yeah, my handmade cover. Did you yeah, this is, the, this is, I think, not the final release. No. But no, the uh, other one's much habit. better. And uh, I have Where's My Fortune Cookie, which is uh, Phil's amazing story. And we'll get to that, I'm sure, uh, later on in the program. I just want to not put over yet. That. These stories are not over yet. No, they're not. Continue no. on. Continue on. I, I, I don't think myself on the launch pad yet. I think I'm, I'm more in the departure lounge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, actors, I think, get that. And the rest of us don't. We just, 
you know, George Carlin said, everybody gets two minutes. No, everyone gets one minute, but actors get two. <laughs> two minutes, Mr. Carlin. Right. So uh, it may be that you get more time in the lounge. Uh, let me just, I want to explain that. Um, I had an uncle <clears throat> who I loved dearly, and he was the head of the Goddard Space Station. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, in, um, in Maryland. And uh, so he and his wife would often use NASA language. They had been with NASA. So he had been with NASA since the first seven astronauts. And so that was our Love big claim to fame, there, or his big claim to fame. That's and when it. my mom and his aunt and his wife were uh, in their fifties, and they thought they were getting very old, uh, my aunt Shirley used to say, yeah. "Well, we're on the launching pad now." Ah. Um, <clears throat> uh, she made it past ninety, and my mom is ninety-three and still with us. So they got a lot of time in that departure lounge. But that's where that's where launching pad comes from for tonight's episode. It's a nice way to look at the ne- the transition as a launching pad. Sure. You think, you know, uh, because, because you feel like you're going somewhere. Well, yeah. And in fact, I, I have a, I had a dear friend named Vanna Bonta, uh, whose husband was a rocket scientist. Well, he still is a rocket scientist and she is in orbit now. Well, and she? I can track her on my cell phone and see where, where Vanna is right now, which is particularly suitable because she not only was a beautiful actress and a singer and voice artist, but she wrote a book, called quantum oh what was it called flight called flight which was the first quantum science fiction novel and and so it's absolutely fitting that she married a rocket scientist and is and was launched now in into orbit. space That's after her, her her physical being her physical work was over on the earth her know? ashes are her ashes are yeah, I, I don't think anybody thought that she was actually it's her ashes i think okay <laughs> i just want to clarify <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> there must be somebody too expensive. Like, what too expensive <laughs> these are all the mini satellites now she went up with like a hundred other all right holes. yeah and they're all in orbit somewhere up there chatting away. Where are you now? Colliding. I'm over in South Africa. You Maybe, know. yeah, they'll be they'll colliding. Right. Hey, get, back off, back <laughs> off. Hey, you get off of my cloud. You know, all right, <laughs> onward. <laughs> well, I, the reason I asked if you had a vision of heaven was because I, I did once, and then I realized that one man's heaven is definitely another man's hell. And I was thinking, heaven is great. You can, like, see anybody performing anywhere, anytime. You just want to go. And that sounds great, right? right? So today we'll go see the Beatles and tomorrow we'll go see the Stones. And then next week we've, we're going to go see uh, Fire Signs doing Bozos. Mm-hmm. That's got to be performer's hell. If you're spending all of eternity performing for the rest of us, poor sides, we're having a great time. I'm we really love to sorry, perform. Man. We love to perform. My favorite time of day is when I'm on stage. Yeah. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you taking a lot of dates now that you're back with the transplant and everything? Uh, I work when they ask me to. Sure, he does. Because no, I know you're also. I seriously, for a moment, I know you're also seriously advocating for heart transplants, and that's sort of become a mission for that's you. That's right. Well, yeah, you I want to take a couple uh, of minutes and talk about that. Well, I, uh, I'm, I've become an ambassador for One Legacy, and One Legacy is the, the local uh, donate life chapter here in Southern California, and they are the ones that found my heart and liver. And I thought, well, what can I do be, to pay back? And I thought of being a volunteer in the hospital uh, to go talk to other people that are waiting for their organs. But um, I I chose to instead to go around speaking about donorship and encouraging donorship. Only 54% of the people in America uh, recycle their bodies. 86% of us recycle our garbage. But the most, the most treasured. That might be, you might have that backwards. I wish I did. <laughs> no, I mean, some people have a lot of garbage inside is what I'm saying, but okay. I would, oh, I see. <laughs> no, no, I, um, I, I, I uh, speak to Kiwanis clubs, Lions clubs. I go to Ground Zero and I speak to DMV groups because the mm-hmm. Department of Motor Vehicles here in the States is Ground Zero mm-hmm. for donorship because that's where you sign up on your license to become that's a donor. Right. right. Uh, many countries, uh, I don't believe Israel has it yet, but... Several countries in it, in uh, I know Spain has it, whereas when you get your driver's license, you automatically become a donor, and then after six months you can opt out. So Spain has a much higher donorship level. I think it's in the 70, 70th percentile, mm-hmm. and um, so more people are saved. And what struck me was that twenty-two people a day die waiting for organs they need. Wow, uh, twenty-two people a day added up. 
So if I can go on a speaking date once a week and I can get eight people to sign up, that's eight times 24 lives we can save. I mean, if, if I get eight people to sign up, I beg your pardon, that's eight lives we can save. So that's eight times eight. That's, that's a lot of people. Well, I got me a donor card. In Israel, it's not part of your driver's license. <clears throat> You've got to actually want to get a donor card. Okay. Um, I got mine. Actually, before my daughter died, I got mine because a very good friend of mine from, uh, from days of uh, pediatric cardiology, in the old days, before we could do this newfangled stuff with video and, and stuff, we were on a list serve, if anybody remembers that. We were emailing each other every day about our families with congenital heart defects, about our kids. And one of these guys came and actually moved, tried to live here. It was very tough on him, but he lived here for a while and he was a heart transplant. And I didn't know that until he got here. <clears throat> and um, he would uh, help me do some of the driving with my daughter and I would take him for his checkups where he had to go in here and get checkup. And it was, it was because of him that um, we went in our family and started getting our cards. Uh, and just by coincidence, we had them when, uh, when Liel was, uh, was uh, dying. Uh, the, I don't know if they do this in the States, but if you have a card in Israel, uh, you get to jump the line over someone who doesn't have a card if you need it. And it's one of the factors they'll consider for need is, are you willing to donate? Do you have a card? Um, that's so, interesting. I, yeah. I I'm not sure that's a great idea because I think it might prevent some people from, from contacting, but I understand why they do it because they need more people to sign up. Yeah. They, they, the world's in desperate need of donors and it's a very passive procedure that's right as you know uh, once you sign that donor card that's all you have to worry about that's all you ever have to worry about and um, you leave an incredible legacy I mean people want to leave something behind on this earth they say well I want to make a difference that makes one big difference because you're saving at least eight lives with your organs and many hundreds yeah, sure. more with your skin tissue and corneas yep. yeah we did that we were able to leave um Skin, uh, one cornea was usable, and cartilage as well. Cartilage and muscle mass. Yeah, it's, it's just amazing the things they're replacing these days. I was five hours old when I had my first surgery. Wow. The only advice I can really give someone like that is to be there for your family. This is life, and you have two choices. You either live it, or you sit in a corner and cry. I am Anna Jaworski, and the host of Heart to Heart with Anna. Join us on Tuesdays at noon Eastern Time on Spreaker, our blog talk radio. We'll cover topics of importance for the congenital heart defect community. Remember, my friends, you are not alone. If you've enjoyed listening to this program, please visit our website, heartsunitetheglobe.org, and make a contribution. This program is a presentation of Hearts Unite the Globe and is part of the Hug Podcast Network. Hearts Unite the Globe is a nonprofit organization devoted to providing resources to the congenital heart defect community to educate, empower, and enrich the lives of our community members. If you would like access to free resources pertaining to the CHD community, please visit our website at congenitalheartdefects.com. For information about CHD, hospitals that treat CHD survivors, summer camps for CHD families, and much, much more. You are listening to Heart to Heart with Michael. If you have a question or comment that you would like addressed on our program, please send an email to Michael Lieben at michael at hearttoheartwithmichael.com. Now, back to Heart to Heart with Michael. Are you following um, what's going on with, in the world with uh, different companies around the world making hearts now? Israel, I think, I think it's in Israel. They've, um, with, a, with a 3D printer, they've made a rabbit heart. That, yes, that they're testing and and, that... and it's delicious too. By the way, <laughs> with the right like, sauce, tastes like chicken. I wouldn't right know. Sauce. Rabbit's not kosher, man. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Rabbit's not kosher. I'm Amish. I'm not Jewish. I'm Amish. <laughs> rabbits can, are definitely not kosher. We eat hooves Why? in the Amish community. So do we, but they have to be because that's all you have. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, the question was, are you following what's going on? Because from what I understand, especially with livers and also with kidneys, they're doing really, really well. Uh, that will, I think, take some of the pressure off on the one hand. Will it also make people who would have otherwise signed say they don't need me anymore? And exactly. Then, and that's yeah. what I'm afraid of. Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of it's doing. These, these uh, manufactured uh, 3D uh, organs yeah, are in such uh, an embryonic stage 
uh, they, it's going to be years and years and years before they can actually put it into a human body and save a life. So right. I don't, uh, frankly, I don't like the publicity that that is getting because that makes people uh, complacent, mm -hmm. makes them feel like they wow. don't have to become donors. And I think I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a big objector to that. Well, they, I, they not them you. doing I mean, it. I'm, but I'm not them, objector they're doing it. No, I don't object them doing it, but I object them talking about it yeah. and publicizing yeah. it. Now, I know why they do it, because they want to get more money for research, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. probably a good thing. So it's just my own little picadillo, and I'll get over it. <laughs> you know, the first thing they did was that they grew an ear in a, in a, a, a Petri dish or something like what? that. I, an ear oh in a petri dish. oh good but like he said it's going to take ears and ears and ears ears, and ears before, before they, they actually yeah. make actually. it you know, here yeah. we go do you, do you guys feel like this because i and this happened in my family and my sister was worried about my father having a heart attack since the day he turned 50 he made it to 85 and it wasn't a heart attack um but do you find like your family's like like closing in and watching and making sure at 40 my sister wouldn't let my father shovel the snow anymore and I have sisters uh, who have uh, hovered over me a little bit. They're kind of helicopter-ish at first, but yeah. now they know that <laughs> everything's fine. I, I mean, I've got a originally had a 46-year-old heart, and now I have a 48-year-old heart because it's been two years, right. and it's doing fine, and nobody's worried about me. Right. Uh, they, we just, uh, it's a miracle, and we accept it, and we're not, Nobody's being a nudge about it. It's wonderful. <laughs> Philip, you only recently um, <clears throat> had your first, as far as I know, heart difficulties, and you got your pacemaker implanted. Yeah. Uh, it also, at the beginning, didn't go so well. You want to tell us a little bit about that? It, at the beginning, it didn't go so well? No, everything was... I think after you had it in, it, it triggered. Oh, no, that oh, was, yeah, that that was, was the that point was because of it. It triggered because there was a problem. Oh, yeah, know, and, but, yeah. It identified the problem, and then he was able to go to the hospital that night. I okay. didn't have my dinner. I had, we, we all just, it was a Thai meal. We had ordered, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had to wear a tie to go into the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> too much things. Now, the fact was that uh, I, I had, a, the heart is a muscle and a, an electronic device, an electrical yeah. device. That's what makes it beat. Hey, and, and it's crazy, man. And uh, in my instance, one of, I'd had what they call a minor heart attack, right. which we apparently have all the time, left a little scar. <laughs> stop it, stop it. Left a little scar on my heart, and it affected one of the nerves that mm -hmm. you know, kept the heart going. And, right. and so this, this crazy little nerve got confused and would go off at the wrong time, and that caused like a tremor over here in my heart, my, uh, my area, which was fast heartbeat. Right, when they right. finally diagnosed it, I went in and they ablated the nerve. Right, now my mom had that. Right, they burned it. And so, right. and they put in this pacemaker in case it should reoccur in some capacity. And when we were at this late lunch at a Thai restaurant, the, the wound had not completely healed yet. Right. And so, there was a little touch of, of, of logarithmia and the thing went off to basically get my heart back to where it was. But since it was a damaged nerve, yeah. it, it didn't do like just once. It, yeah. it kept going. Oh gosh. And it was like getting kicked in the, in, in the chest by a horse. He literally shot three feet. Yeah, I did. Across the floor yeah, in was his not, chair. It was not a pleasant experience. In his chair. And I was, he was sitting next to me. <laughs> and, he, uh, and I looked up to talk to him. He was gone. Yeah. He, he wow. Was right, he was behind me by three feet. It happened three times, so we called the ambulance. But I've had absolutely no difficulties, knock on wood since then yeah well he upgraded to the uh, better pacemaker he got the xm Sirius radio and the on star <laughs> yeah i do and he has climate control now yeah <laughs> what kind of climate wait a minute we got to do it right let's see what kind of climate i can get yeah that's, that's yeah. right that's right uh, well, uh, as a fire side tropical idea. forest what a group yeah. what kind of Tropical climate forest. can i get it, it's funny too because when we did that album what was it how can you be in two places at once yeah, yeah i think yeah yeah for sure yeah, anywhere at all anywhere uh, i uh, we came up with the idea of climate control in a car. And do you know that that very year they created climate control in a I car? They had it first because I came yeah, to it yeah. later. The theater were futurists. Of course, his was they, had, they had thunderstorms in yeah, the car. Yes, so thunderstorms. That's right. That's hurricanes, right. Yeah, right. cyclones. <laughs> but, wow. but yes, 
every, I, As Jamie and Phil trail off into the sunset, I can assure you that they will be back next month to finish this conversation. But for now, we're out of time, and I'd like to thank you for joining us this month on Heart to Heart with Michael. If you're watching this on video, congratulations, and thank you for joining the Heart to Heart team through Patreon. Until next month, on behalf of all of us at Heart to Heart and Heart to Unite the Globe, please stay safe, stay inside, stay well, and take care of the ones you love. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us. We hope you have gained strength from listening to our program. Heart to Heart with Michael can be heard every Thursday at noon Eastern Time. We'll talk again next time when we'll share more stories.